What's up, everybody? It's Just Thunder from the Foosh.com, and tonight we're going to take a look at the Mezco 112 Collective Death Dealer exclusive figure. This release is a continuation of sorts of the ongoing partnership friendship between uh, Frank Frazetta's estate and Mezco Toys. And to put it simply, if you like Conan, you're going to love this. While we get a 360 look at the figure, let's talk a little bit of background. Death Dealer made his first appearance as it was in a Frazetta painting uh, that debuted in 1973. And that painting set the uh, sort of trademark looks for the character. Uh, he's got the black eagle on the shield, the bearded axe, the horned helmet, as well as just a general exuding badass presence. That painting led to a franchise of sorts, obviously spawning other paintings, uh, some tabletop games, and some comic books in the 90s featuring art by the great Simon Bisley and I think it was Glenn Danzig of all people who wrote the books back in the day. They've gone on to write more recent comic books, of course, and some novels and stuff, but my personal favorite bit of Death Dealer trivia is the fact that there is a giant bronze statue of this badass out in front of the offices of Third Corps in Fort Hood, Texas as he is the third core official mascot. Getting back to the more review side of things here, having him next to Conan, you can see that he does share not just an aesthetic language, which is appropriate, but there's actually some physical shared parts as well. I believe the torso and the legs are the same as Conan's. We're dealing with new arms and new boots and so on, but you get the idea. Let's go over that articulation, but before I do, I wanted to mention this sheath here. Now, it has a similar, like, hook-style attachment as Conan does, but I just put the chain on it and looped it through the belt. I feel like it's a lot simpler solution. So, outward shoulder movement is decent, obviously limited a little bit by clothing and armor, but you could push it beyond this. This feels like about the comfortable range for them. But that new double elbow does get a tighter bend beyond 90 degrees. You no doubt noticed he has a light-up feature, much like Cable, Cyclops, and Dr. Fate. You can remove this LED with a quarter twist that gives you access to the power switch and the batteries. But I also want to note this is a lot less obtrusive as far as his articulation goes somehow. He doesn't seem to impede his torso nearly as much as the other figures previously. His cloth goods have this great layered appearance without feeling too heavy or thick. The skirt pieces have some wired edges on the outward parts. And you got this great flowing chain mail down the middle. But moving that aside, you can see the legs are very similar to Conan in terms of articulation and style. Ball jointed hips and double jointed knees, of course, with a boot swivel. I'll bring in Conan here for a little bit more visual comparison. Like I mentioned, the arms are obviously a new sculpt, but they are very similar to Conan's. Let's briefly go over weapons, starting with his scimitar. This one is also a lot like Conan's sword and shares a lot of that great detailing and paintwork. Next we have his massive and bloodied bearded axe. This also works great with effects pieces I will show you a little later. Here's a closer look at his battle shield which I believe is adorned with a black eagle which is a pretty common Germanic medieval symbol but I've heard it described as a dragon as well. I mentioned he has alternate armors. This is his extra shoulder harness piece. Obviously, I like the one that's on it, so I'll probably leave it that way. And here is his other optional belt, also very similar to the one coming with the next Conan release, if I'm not mistaken. But this belt has a peg hole in the back, which allows you to peg in his dagger sheath. Unfortunately, the, the much cooler skull belt doesn't have this option, so I may just have to come up with another way to stash it on there, but there you go. He has an optional teeth necklace piece that, well, goes around his neck like necklaces do. And lastly, there are also these little attachment hooks that I mentioned that are like the ones that came with Conan. These are for the sheaths. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these. They work okay, but like I said, I just ran the chain through the belt and that's much more secure. He comes with two effects pieces. I think they're both intended for the axe. I mean, I guess you could get creative. You could probably put them on the sword as well, but they look the best with the axe. This first one is a slashing effect, and like with most Mezco uh, accessory um, effect pieces, they look their best when you have a good light source behind them. Uh, 
The second one is simpler but no less brutal. This is just your smack on impact effect piece. Combine that with a tasteful little bit of blood spatter on the blood axe, it's a very cool look. Death Dealer also comes with a cloak, which at first I was kind of meh on, but the more I've looked at it and the subtle detail and the weathering, I have really come to appreciate it. There's also a posing wire that runs the length of the outward edge of the cloak. And again, this thing just looks like it's been some places and seen some shit. You no doubt notice that there are two head options. This is my personal favorite of the two. I like the more ornate helmet, but there's nothing wrong with the second one either. He also comes with the heads of two of his vanquished foes. This one especially that's got the hair sculpted to be held in his grip hand so he can carry it. You get the feeling that this poor bastard did something to make this personal. The other one which I'll just insert a picture of here is a face in a pool of blood that you can put in any display or flat surface. And lastly, he includes an enamel pin set and a silkscreen art print. The art print is actually very cool. I may have to find a place in my office to hang that one. I know a lot of people don't like that little extra stuff, but I feel like there was more than enough value in the figure. This is just bonus stuff. It certainly doesn't take anything away from it. So we come to the part of the review where I make my recommendations, and this is a very easy part for me. Like I said from the outset, if you like Conan, you're going to love this Death Dealer figure. And if you love Conan, well, you might be wishing you ordered a second one, because that's about where I'm at now. I have been a fan of Frank Frazetta's work since I first saw Fire and Ice many, many years ago at probably an inappropriate age in the before time. And I've always been a much bigger Conan fan, but obviously Death Dealer kind of goes hand in hand. And while I've never been like a hardcore Death Dealer guy, this figure is making me think I ought to maybe go pick up a couple of the novelizations or check out the newer comic book series. That means Mezco Toys did their usual and knocked it out of the park. Thank you so much for that, and thank you so much for helping me get a copy to review. And also, special thanks to the Frazetta Girls for doing such an excellent job of maintaining Frank's legacy and letting us get cool products like this. And lastly, of course, thanks to you guys for coming through and watching, and we'll see you in the next one.